So we are going to the next part of the heat exchanger. And uh, so in the previous classes also, we discussed about that, uh, what is the classification and what is the definitions of the heat exchanger. Now we are going to discuss about that with the uh, logarithmic temperature, mean temperature difference, and uh, what is called as the NTU method that one is, okay? So we need to discuss about that. In the previous class, uh, we were not discussing about the physical state of the fluids. Uh, what is the condenser and what is the evaporator, okay? So today we are uh, in a brief glimpse about that one is the, what is the physical state of the fluids. Uh, physical state uh, means that is the uh, vapor or in the liquid, okay? If the, what is called as a fluid, fluid is means nothing but the liquid or vapor. If it is in the fluid state, what do you call that one is, okay? If it is in the, uh, if it is in the liquid state, what do you call that one is? If it is in the gaseous state or vapor state, what do you call that one is, okay? This is a based on the physical state of the fluid. So we are classifying that one is the heat exchanger. One is called as a, a condenser and other one is called as the evaporator. Uh, you can ask the questions that one is the, what is the condenser? Condenser, so I think in the refrigeration part, you have, you saw that one is the a condenser here, that one is the condenser, whatever the heat extracted in the evaporator, understand? Whatever the heat extracted, the heat will be input to the so system, okay? Means that there is a heat extracted uh, in the evaporator and this goes to the a compressor where the pressurization will be taking place after that pressure the whatever that one is the a vapor or the gaseous state okay it will be goes to the a condenser here understand so condenser so condenser where the high pressure in the evaporator is the high pressure or in the a condenser is the high pressure okay so because of that one is the so compressor is installed here understand this is the one of the most important component in the refrigerator system i think you know okay so compressor is used to pressurize the vapor and the high pressure which is available in the condenser. But throughout the system of the condenser, the pressure will be a constant. I think we'll discuss that with this, okay? So in the uh, previous classes in the ATD or in the uh, EME, you, you come to know what this one is, okay? So what is the condenser? Condenser is, uh, equipment which converts the vapor to liquid, vapor to liquid. So whatever the heat extracted in the evaporator, it will be rejected. The same amount of the heat will be rejected in the condenser. And so it is converting vapor to liquid in the condenser. Okay. Vapor to vapor to liquid. Okay. So the pressure is high. As compared to the evaporator, the pressure in the condenser is high, but throughout the system, it maintains the same pressure. Understand? So you have to remember, okay? So here, the TH, inlet temperature of the hot fluid, uh, outlet temperature of the hot fluid, as per this diagram, inlet temperature of the hot fluid and outlet temperature of the hot fluid will be a same constant that it is. That's why right. THI is equal to TH0, okay, in the condenser, okay, then, but here that one is the, there will be changes in the system, there will be changes of vapor to liquid here, the inlet temperature of the cold fluid somewhat that one is, the temperature of the cold fluid will be increases, temperature of the cold fluid will be increases, that one is, so the, this is not, this is called as the outlet temperature of the cold fluid here. Outlet temperature of the cold fluid here in the condenser here, that one is, okay? Suppose if the uh, gas here, okay, gas here, that one is called as a uh, hot fluid, okay? Hot fluid, if it is the same temperature, the outlet will be same temperature and what we will discuss here, that one is. But whatever that one is a liquid, which is passing, okay? liquid which is passing through the condenser, that's why the cold fluid, the temperature of the cold fluid will be increases in the condenser that one is. Another, okay? So this is the a condenser here, okay? Next one is, uh, 
what is called as u operator okay u operator here okay same thing so u operator i think you know so this one is called as a this is called as a u operator here understand so this is called as a u operator in the u operator in the u operator the cold fluid temperature will be the constant so pressure as well as cold fluid temperature will be constant tc1 so that is equal to tc2 here that one is understand tc1 is equal to tc2 so cold fluid temperature will be the constant that one is but the hot fluid the hot fluid will be temperature will be decreases hot fluid temperature will be decreases means that one is it extracted the in the evaporator it extracted understand it extracted the heat from the what is called as the a perishable item which is kept in the refrigerator that one is so that one is to keep cooling effect you are getting the cooling effect so that one is what is called as the the temperature of the cool that one is the a perishable item will be decreases that one is understand okay the hot fluid temperature so that is hot fluid temperature goes on decreases here understand goes on decreases here so th1 hot fluid temperature th1 is decreases to th2 here okay in the evaporator in the evaporator that means okay so heat transfer taking place from so hot fluid temperature to the cold fluid temperature here understand but the system in the evaporator the cold fluid temperature is constant understand so this is the the temperature difference th minus th so this one is called as a, a temperature of the hot fluid so that is the mean temperature of the hot fluid and this one is the mean temperature of the cold fluid the temperature mean temperature difference between the hot fluid and cold fluid that is called as a theta okay so this is the evaporator okay so what is the so this one is the condenser in the condenser the hot fluid temperature maintained constant as well as the pressure remains constant that is so in the condenser so link the vapor is converted into the a liquid form whatever that one is the heat extracted in the evaporator it will be rejected in the condenser but here in the evaporator so that one is latent heat understand is it to extract the latent heat is to extract the latent heat from the perishable item and the cold temperature will be the constant here cold temperature will be constant only the variation of the hot fluid temperature occurs it will be decreases understand so that one is the theta is equal to th minus tc here that means the evaporator so that one is the uh, which extract the heat here extract the heat Okay, means that one is what happens in the evaporator. Whatever that one is the low pressure after the expansion valve. Understand? Expansion valve means that one is converting high pressure to low pressure. So low pressure which is available in the evaporator here. Understand? Low pressure, low pressure. That's a vapor form. Okay, sorry, liquid form. So low pressure liquid form enter into the evaporator here. mind it understand okay so low pressure so that one is the uh, liquid form okay means that in the evaporator converting liquid to vapor converting liquid to vapor in the evaporator this is the function of the evaporator that it is okay so next so these are the differences i think uh, what we discuss that one is the so there is a difference between the condenser and evaporator that one okay next uh, we are going to discuss about that uh, what is the log mean temperature difference here lmt we can call this one as the lmt log mean temperature i think in the mathematics you know that one is uh, logarithmic mean is a function of two non negative numbers understand two non negative numbers suppose lmt delta t1 minus delta 2 delta t1 is also called as a non negative numbers what is a delta t1 delta t1 is called as a so it is a difference of the hot fluid and cold fluid 
Delta two is called as a at the outlet. So that's the difference of the hot fluid and cold fluid here. Okay. So that's why LMTD means that it is is a function of two non-negative numbers, which is equal to the difference. Okay, delta T one, delta T one difference. Okay, delta T one minus delta two. So, which is equal to the their difference, their difference divided by the logarithm of their quotient. Delta T one divided by delta two is two is a quotient. Understand? So, what quotient? Logarithm of their quotient. Logarithm of their quotient is called as a log mean temperature difference. Okay? What is the log mean temperature difference? That's one is the logarithm mean is a function of two non-negative numbers, which is equal to the difference divided by the logarithm of their quotient. This type of calculation is applicable in engineering problems involving the heat and mass transfer. That one is. So how it is applicable? We know about that one is. Understand? So I will, so this is called as a log LMDD. Delta T one minus delta T two divided by log of delta T one logarithmic. Okay, logarithm divided by the the quotient of their logarithms. Understand? Log of delta T one divided by the delta two. That one. So this is called as the a log mean temperature difference equation. Suppose I will give an example of what is a delta T one. Delta T one is equal to T hot fluid. Inlet temperature of the hot fluid minus so outlet temperature of the cold fluid. Understand outlet temperature of the cold fluid. So that one is equal to 100 minus 55. So that is equal to 45. Example. So for example, okay, delta two. Delta two is called as a T hot fluid outlet. Okay, T hot fluid outlet. Outlet exit temperature of the hot fluid. Minus so inlet temperature of the cold fluid T cold fluid that's a uh, 85 minus 30 that is equal to 55. Then LMTD can be calculated using this equation surface. Okay, so I think then after calculating the LMTD after calculating the LMTD Q you can calculate it Q is equal to U A delta T here. Okay. Where U Q is called as a heat flow rate, heat flow rate in the vat, and A is called as the heat flow area. So the sun is called as a heat flow area, and this sun is called as a, a surface area. Understand? And U is called as the overall heat transfer coefficient, that is in vat per meter square kelvin. In the first chapter only we discussed about that means what is the overall heat transfer coefficient that one is. And delta T is called as a, a temperature difference. Temperature difference second is the delta T is called as a temperature difference second is. But in case of log mean temperature, this element okay, you can take instead of the delta T. Here. What is the uh, we discuss about what is the meaning of the log mean temperature difference here? Okay, so with the given the example of this one is we discuss. Then where it is uh, applicable? Okay, in the classifications of the heat exchanger, uh, we discuss about that one is the based on the direction of the fluid. Based on the direction of the fluid, heat can heat exchanger can be classified into two, three ways. That one is one is called as a, a parallel flow heat exchanger, another one is called as a, a counter flow heat exchanger, and another one is called as a, a cross flow heat exchanger. But as per your the syllabus, that one is only we are discussing about parallel flow heat exchanger and counter flow heat exchanger. So we need to uh, derive an equations log mean temperature difference for the parallel flow heat exchanger and counter flow heat exchanger. Okay. Suppose that one is the uh, what we discuss. Uh, we discuss first. We take about that one is the log mean temperature difference. That one is. For the parallel flow heat exchanger, and another one is for the a counter flow heat exchanger. Okay, suppose uh, 
uh, just uh, I'll go with this uh, figure that I'm using. Why you are going for the log mean temperature difference? Okay, so you need to discuss T1 given. Sometimes it is the TH1 is given in the numericals, and in or in in order to design the heat exchanger. Understand? How to design the heat exchanger? Okay, for the effective cooling effect. Okay, for effective heat transfer rate. Okay, I want to get the outlet temperature of what is that? It is a customer requirement. Understand? For the suppose this one is the hundred degree Celsius. Hot fluid temperature is a hundred degree Celsius. Any how condition? Any condition? The customer requirement outlet temperature of the hot fluid should be a twenty degree Celsius. Understand? Outlet temperature of the hot fluid should be. So 20 degree Celsius, the customer requirement. So according to the customer requirement, we need to design the heat exchanger. Understand? We need to design the heat exchanger. What you need to design the heat exchanger? What is the length of the heat exchanger is required? Understand? What is the length of the heat exchanger we need to require? That is called as the area of the heat exchanger we need to require so, okay how that one is so that area of the heat exchanger directly influence to the that one is the a temperature difference that one is understand okay you take that one is 100 degrees Celsius, for example so that one is to convert that one is hot fluid inlet temperature to the Outlet temperature of hot fluid, hot fluid to the 20 degrees Celsius. What length of the heat exchanger is required? What means what area of the heat exchanger required that one is? Understand? So that is we for that purposes we are going for the log mean temperature difference here. That one. Are you understood? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that one is. A parallel flow heat exchanger and counter flow heat exchanger. Before going to derive an equation for the log mean temperature difference for the parallel flow heat exchanger or it may be the counter flow heat exchanger, some assumptions we need to make while deriving the equations. What are the assumptions? Okay, what are the in the fluid mechanics? All these assumptions and the concept of these assumptions. You know about that one is. But what are the assumptions that one is we have to discuss while deriving the uh, LMTD method for the pattern for heat exchanger we need to discuss here. First one is colors. So what are the assumptions? Overall heat transfer coefficient. Overall heat transfer coefficient U is constant for the entire length of the heat exchanger. Overall heat transfer coefficient U is called as a constant that one. Then, second one is called as flow conditions are steady. What is the meaning of the flow conditions are steady? Steady in this means the velocity does not, the velocity does not change us with the time. Understand? The velocity does not change us with the time. That is called as the flow conditions are steady that one is. First one is overall heat transfer coefficient is constant, and second one is called as the flow conditions are steady. Means that the velocity does not change us with the time. Velocity of the fluid which is flowing in the heat exchanger does not change us with the a time here. That means. Third one, specific heats. Understand? Specific heats of the hot fluid. Specific heats of the cold fluid. Understand? Specific heats of the hot fluid and specific heats of the uh, cold fluid uh, and mass flow rate also. Mass flow rate of the hot fluid and mass flow rate of the cold fluid are both are constant. Understand? So mass flow rate does not change us with the length of the what is called as a heat exchanger. Okay? So specific heats of the both the hot and fluid, uh, cold fluid and as well as for the as well as mass flow rate are both of the of the both fluids are constant that it is and fourth one there is no loss 
of heat to the surroundings. Means that means the heat exchanger is perfectly insulated. Understand? If it is a perfectly insulated, means that means there is no loss of heat exchange heat from the heat exchanger. That means okay. So this is called as a one of the assumption that means there is no heat loss. Okay, no loss of heat to the surroundings. So due to the heat exchanger being perfectly insulated that is and fifth one is there is no change of phase either of fluid during the heat transfer means that it is the change of phase liquid to vapor vapor to liquid like that it is no there is no change of phases in the well of either by the liquid flowing understand so that due to the temperature that it is you may think about that it is that there will be change of phase from liquid to vapor. Okay, so but that is the what the assumption what it is stated that there is no change of phase of the liquid. So in the heat exchanger that is okay. Then sixth one is the changes in the potential and kinetic energy are negligible. Okay, changes in the potential it may changes, but so as per the assumption. The changes in the kinetic energy and potential energy of the liquid or that is uh, whatever the fluid we are considering the heat exchanger is negligible. That one is. Understand? Okay. And axial conduction, axial conduction along the tubes of the heat exchanger is negligible. Okay. What is called as axial? Axial along the axis means, okay, along the axis, okay. What are, that one is a negligible, that one is, okay? But as per the assumption, that one is, we are not considering that one is the, what is the conduction is happening through axial, that one is, okay? Along the axis of the fluid, okay? So axial conduction of along the tubes of the heat exchanger is negligible. So these are called as the uh, seven assumptions that one is, uh, we need to made while deriving the the LMTD method for the parallel and counter flow heat exchanger that one is. So people, if they depending upon the mass that one is, uh, uh, sometimes they ask that one is the, what are the assumptions made to people derive that one is the log mean temperature difference for the parallel and counter flow heat exchanger. So you can write, okay? If they ask the derivations, you should write the assumption before going to drive the what is called as a LMTD method for the heat exchanger. Okay, so these are the assumptions. One is called as a overall heat transfer coefficient, and the other one is called as a steady state maintaining, and there is no changes of the mass flow rate and specific heat, and there is no heat losses, and there is no phase change, and there is no kinetic and potential energy changes, and there is no heat conduction around the access okay so that one is the uh, assumptions these are the assumptions that one is we need to make file deriving so parallel flow or counter flow heat exchanger then so we need to discuss about the what is the parallel flow so how to derive the lmtd method that one is okay so what is the parallel flow parallel flow direction understand the parallel flow heat exchanger it is classification, one of the classification of the heat exchanger based on the direction of the fluid flow. We derive, so we classify the heat exchanger. One is called as the parallel flow heat exchanger. Another one is called as a counter flow heat exchanger. So we are now we are going to discuss about what is called as a, a parallel flow heat exchanger here. So parallel flow heat exchanger, both the hot fluid this is called as a middle pipe this is called as a concentric pipe okay this one is the inner space of the so pipe and this one is called as a outer annular space of the pipe here okay so in the both the direction of the hot fluid and cold fluid in the same direction understand okay the direction of the hot fluid and cold fluid or in the same direction, such type of heat exchanger are called as a, a parallel flow heat exchanger. Understand? Okay. 
So this is called as the inlet section and this is called as the outlet section here that it is. Okay. Okay. Initial temperature of the heart fluid is very high. Outlet temperature of the heart fluid is less as compared to the initial temperature. But initial temperature of the cord fluid here, here also both will be low. And after that one is the outlet temperature of the cord fluid obviously will be increases because heat transfer from the heart fluid to the cord fluid here. Okay. So this is a graph. So this graph is area is along the x axis and temperature along the y axis here. That is. Okay. So what I that one is initial temperature of the but direction. See that one is direction. This is the arrow mark. And this is the heart fluid direction. So both are in the same direction. Understand? Both are in the same direction. That is called as a, a parallel flow heat exchanger. So this is called as the inlet condition, and this is called as the outlet conditions of the both of fluids here. Okay. But so suppose you take that one is the outlet heart fluid, heart fluid flowing in the this direction, that one is. Inlet temperature of the heart fluid is very, very high. Understand? As long as the area of the heat exchanger increases, area of the heat exchanger is increases due to the heat transfer from the heart fluid to the cord fluid, the temperature of the heart fluid is decreases, goes on, decreases that one is. Okay? Suppose if we consider that one is the a cold fluid. So cold fluid here. The initially the cold fluid temperature is very low. Understand? So that one is as long as heat transfer. Okay, as long as that one is the area of the heat exchanger or length of the heat exchanger increases. That one is then he due to the heat transfer from hot fluid to the cold fluid. Hot fluid loses the heat. Cold fluid gaining the heat, that one is the temperature of the cold fluid will be increases, that one is. Understand? Hence, TC1 is called as the inlet temperature of the cold fluid. TC2 is called as the outlet temperature of the cold fluid, where TC2 is greater than the TC1. Okay? So, this is called as the, uh, what is called as a graphical representation, that one is. Okay? Uh, here, suppose if we take that one, is, this is the area here, okay? This is the temperature distribution, that one is how the temperature distribution, and this is called as the air flow arrangement here, okay? Suppose if we take an element here, take an element that one is, this is called as a, a DQ, the DQ is called as heat transfer through this element, heat transfer to this element, and TH, what is called as a TH? This one is called as a TH1 and this one is called as a TH2. The average temperature is called as a TH here. And this is called as a TC here. Understand? So TC2 and this one is a TC1 and this is called as a TC here. This is the mean temperature of the cold fluid temperature. TC. So TC. Okay. This is called as a mean temperature of the cold fluid here. Okay. Then theta. Theta is called as a the mean temperature, difference between the mean temperature of the hot fluid to the cold fluid is called as theta here. But here you can see here, okay? So this one is the a temperature difference between the inlet of the hot fluid and, and inlet temperature of the cold fluid that is called as a theta 1. Remember that one is, okay? Inlet temperature of the hot fluid minus inlet temperature of the cold fluid is called as a, a theta of one here, that one is. Here at the uh, RHS side, the outlet temperature of the heart fluid, outlet temperature of the heart fluid minus in outlet temperature of the cold fluid. Understand, outlet temperature of the cold fluid, that is called as the, a theta two here, theta two here, that one is. Understand, okay? So you consider the one element here, one element, okay? Of area DA, of area DA, and heat transfer to this element, what we consider that is called as the DQ here. That is called as the DQ here. Suppose if we take the element, there will be a slope because this difference is called as 
DTH and this difference is called as a DTC here that one is understand. So this is the uh, diagrammatic or graphical representation of the uh, parallel flow heat exchanger in the LMTD method that one is. Is there any doubt Sakib here? No, no sir. Yes, we can go here, okay. Uh, you understood that one is the, what is the parallel flow heat exchanger. Then we go for how to drive the equations that one is, okay. That, okay. Which shows in the figure, uh, in the figure that is flow arrangement and distribution of the temperature in the single pass parallel flow heat exchanger. So let us consider DA, okay? D, what is called as? DA is called as the elemental area. So elemental area of the heat exchanger and the heat flow through this element, heat flow through this element is given by the DQ here that it is. Understand? So DQ we can calculate the DQ is equal to U into DA TH minus TC here, where DQ is called as the heat transfer to the elemental area, U is called as the overall heat transfer coefficient. Remember that one is overall heat transfer coefficient and DA is called as the elemental area, elemental area and TH is called as a TH, what is the TH here? TH is called as a mean temperature of the hot fluid. Mean temperature of the hot fluid. And TC is called as the mean temperature of the cold fluid here. And that is equal to U into DA into delta T here. Where delta T is called as TH minus TC here. That one is. As a result, heat transfer DQ through the area and the hot fluid is pulled by DTH, hot fluid. So this is called as a, a temperature, okay? So difference at least, uh, a hot fluid is pulled by the, what is called as the amount DTH, where the cold, uh, cold fluid is heated by up DTC, understand? What is taken that one is this temperature difference, okay? So cold fluid heated by this amount DTC, hot fluid will be that one is the uh, so heat given by the hot fluid this is DTH, okay? This is the, what they given that it is, okay? So that is the DTH, the hot fluid is pulled by DTH where the cold fluid is heated, okay? Cold fluid is heated by the DTC, the energy balance. So we have to maintain part that one is the energy balance from the hot fluid to cold fluid, understand? The energy balance or the differential area what is called as elemental area may be written as DQ. How we can calculate DQ? That is MH into CPH into DTH. What is the DTH here? DTH is called as hot fluid pulled by the DTH. That's the temperature, amount temperature. Understand? Whereas the cold fluid DTC is called as the so hot fluid, so heated up by the a DTC here. So DQ, M, M dot H, okay? M dot H is called as a, a mass per rate of hot fluid. Mass per rate of the hot fluid. CPH is called as the, a, a, what is called as the, a, a specific heat of the hot fluid here. Specific heat of the hot fluid. And DTH is called as the, the amount of temperature which is cooled by the, the cool, cool, that one is the, a hot fluid, understand? So this is called as a, you can calculate the what is called as a heat transfer to the what is called as a element, what we consider that way. Why we taking the minus sign here? Minus sign we are taking because heat is lost from the hot fluid. Heat will be lost, heat will be given up by the hot fluid, understand? That's why we are taking the a negative sign here. That's why DQ is equal to M minus MH into CPH into DTH. This DQ also can be calculated using the equation. What is that it is? Mass per rate of the cold fluid into this specific heat of the cold fluid and that's what is the, what is called as a, a temperature heated up by the heated, so up, uh, heated up the a cold fluid DTC, that is MC, CPC, DTC. Okay, you can also calculate it using this equation. And wherever the sun is, 
we can equate this to the this equation understand dq this dq is whatever that means it also equate to the equal to the this one understand so equate this dq and this dq then dth separately dth can be calculated dq divided by mh cph understand and this one is the that is equal to minus dq understand minus dq mh cph is equal to ch now we did given that one is the what is the ch here and similarly dtc dtc is equal to dq dq divided by this term mc into cpc m dot c into cpc mass per rate of the cold fluid so into specific heat of the cold fluid so dtc is called as a the temperature amount of temperature it will be heat of the cold fluid okay dq divided by m dot cpc that is equal to dq divided by cc c capital c to the suffix small c what is the meaning of that one is the multiplications of product of mass per rate of the cold fluid to the specific heat of the cold fluid is called as the heat capacity this heat capacity or water equivalent of cold fluid this capital c to the suffix c okay is called as the heat capacity or water equivalent of cold fluid that's equal to m dot c into cp c mass per rate into specific heat of the cold fluid similarly ch what we taken here okay this ch is equal to m dot h cp s heat capacity or water equivalent of the hot fluid that one is okay water equivalent of the hot fluid where ch is called c suffix to h is called as heat capacity or water equivalent of the hot fluid where c suffix to this c okay capital c suffix to this small c is also called as heat capacity or water equivalent of the cold fluid these two are very very important while calculating the numericals this play a very very important rule that one is understand okay so this one is that i think you understood this steps here where mh and cc are called as a mass per rate of fluids cph and mass per rate of fluids and cph cc are the respective of the specific heats that one is okay is there any doubt here that one is no no sir yes next one is okay you are so in the previous slide understand in the previous slide that means uh, we discuss about what is the dth and what is the dth here then so we next step next step so you have to take that one is the difference of these two what happens dth minus dtc that is equal to put the values of the here okay put the values of the here what is the dth minus dtc here that means okay dth okay here dth is equal to minus dq divided by ch and dtc is called as dq divided by c c okay so you have to put here that one is okay if you take dth minus dtc understand then you have to put that one is the, so you take the uh, value of that one is minus of dq divided by 1 into 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc after substituting what is called as here okay after substituting these values in this equations you will get that one is the 1 upon cs plus 1 upon cc minus dq taking outside then dth minus dtc is equal to d theta okay is equal to d theta so difference between dth minus dtc we take that one as a d theta here okay that is equal to written as this minus dq 1 upon ch plus 1 upon cc here that is okay you can call this equation 10.5 here that is okay but so we know value what is the value of the dq here where you know where you calculate that one is the dq value here you can calculate it here understand so you already calculated the what is the dq value that's what is u a th minus tc understand 
U A U A T H U D A. Okay, U B A. D A is called as the elemental area. So D Q already you know that one is. So this D Q value we have to substitute E here. Okay, then after substituting of the D Q value from this previous that previous slide equations. D theta is equal to minus U D A T H minus T C here. That is equal to one upon C H and plus one upon C C. So what is C H? Specific heat capacity of the hot fluid. The capacity of the hot fluid. Simply we can cut that one as the capacity of the hot fluid. C suffix to the C is cut as the capacity of the cold fluid. That one is understand. So after substituting of the values of the DQ, we will get this equation. Then D theta is equal to minus U D A theta. Understand? T H minus T C. What is the T H minus T C here? So we have discussed about that means the T H minus T C. This T S minus T T T C is cut as the theta here. By this diagram, you know that means T H minus T C is equal to theta here. Understand? Okay, so this is T H minus T C is cut as the theta here. That's into one upon C H plus one upon C C here. Hence, so rewrite this equation D theta divided by theta. You take theta here in the L H side. D theta divided by theta. That is equal to minus U into D A one upon C H plus one upon C C. Okay. So I how to get this is for only for the elemental okay elemental area in the diagram what we need to consider here understand what we need to consider only elemental area we need to consider but we want the equation for the entire heat exchanger line understand so that purposes we are going to integrate between the inlet and outlet conditions understand inlet to the Outlet conditions certainly is the from zero to a, zero to a, from a is got initial conditions to zero and it's a a to a. That one is outlet conditions a. We can call that one as a a. That's one from one to two or condition one to two. Inlet inlet condition is called as a one and outlet condition is called as the two here. That one is understand. Okay, so integrate. So this equation, whatever the above equation, from one to two, d theta divided by theta, that is equal to minus of one upon c h plus one upon c c. Area you have to integrate. Understand? Okay, because it's a d a, so we need to a that is zero to a. Okay, zero to initial stage area is zero and final stage area is a. Understand? So that one is zero to a here, zero to a u into d a. U is a constant you have to take outside. Then integration of one upon theta is cut as ln of theta two divided by theta one. After so substituting these uh, limits into the this equation. Okay, integration of one upon theta is cut as ln theta. Okay, after substituting the limits inside that one is. That becomes ln of theta two minus theta one, or that one is logarithmic indices theorem. It becomes also ln of theta two divided by theta one. That is equal to minus integration of so d a. So that one is zero to minus a. That one is the a. Okay. So that one is a here. A is equal to minus u of a. Understand? U of a is equal to one upon C H plus one upon C C. You will get the equation here. That one is understand. Okay, we are getting that one is the. This is the equation ln of theta two divided by theta one. That is equal to minus of U A one upon C S plus one upon C C here. Okay. Next one is okay. Now total heat we need to consider. Calculate. You calculated this one is understand. You calculated this one. What is the total heat? Total heat for the entire element from inlet to outlet. Understand? We need to calculate. Okay. So total heat we need to calculate. Total heat transfer between the two fluids is given by 
Q is equal to C H. C H is that is called as a specific key or sorry heat capacity of the hot fluid. Heat capacity hot fluid minus the into so inlet temperature of the hot fluid minus outlet temperature of the hot fluid. Or that is you can calculate using the this conditions also. What is that this? What is the uh, is a heat capacity of the so cold fluid into the outlet temperature of the hot fluid we are taking here understand why because of the outlet temperature of the sorry cold fluid outlet temperature of the cold fluid is greater than the inlet temperature of the cold fluid that's why we are taking that one is the here tc2 minus tc1 so by using this equation or by using this equation we can calculate the what is the total heat transfer rate between the two fluids second is understand but one upon ch one upon ch how how we calculate that is one upon ch we need to so take here in one upon ch value we have to substitute here and one upon cc value we need to substitute here that is how to calculate the one upon ch value one upon cc value here come to here first equation one upon C ch value one upon ch that is what is the one upon ch value here so here dth is equal to dq divided by ch here understand so one upon ch is equal to dth divided by q yes sir yes, yes sir. and okay one upon cc is equal as dtc divided by q okay so yes, using sir. this equation one upon ch one upon cc you can get okay thereafter you have to substitute here that means understand one upon ch th1 minus th2 divided by the q here using this one you can calculate correct yes yes, yes sir so q is equal to ch th1 minus th2 one upon ch is equal to th1 minus th2 divided by q correct Yes, yes, sir. Here? yes sir. And one upon CC. Here that means one upon CC is equal to TC2 minus TC1 divided by Q from this equation, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm, yes that sir. this one upon CH value, one upon here in this equation also you can calculate, okay? From this equation, one upon CH value, one upon CC value, you have to substitute in this equation. Okay, you have to substitute in this equation what you will get here. That's ln of theta 2 divided by theta 1 is equal to minus u of a, u a into what is the 1 upon ch value? th1 minus th2 divided by q, correct? Plus what is 1 upon cc value? 1 upon cc value, understand? Here the 1 upon cc value here, 1 upon cc value you have to take here and substitute here. TC2 minus TC1. Okay, Q here that means. Understand? Okay. Then UA divided by Q is equal to TH2 minus TC2. So, in, so uh, uh, you can rechange that one is a portion. You can rechange. Take the minus side inside. Take the minus side inside. Thus, TC2 becomes minus. Correct? So here, taking the minus side inside. So Q is a common, Q has a common, you have to take outside. So here's the, so TH1, minus of TH1, okay? Here the minus of TH1, okay? Here the minus will get that one is, okay? Here the TH2, TH2 is the minus here. If you're taking the minus inside, this becomes TH2 plus TH2, TH2 minus TC2 minus of TH1 minus TC1, you will get that one is. If we're taking the minus sign inside, minus sign inside, that one is the, you will get this part. Okay? That is equal to UA divided by Q. But what is the TH2 minus TC2? That is theta2 in the graphical form. Okay? In the graph here, you can saw that one is the, in the graph here. Okay? TH2 minus TC2 Outlet condition of the temperature difference that is called as a theta 2. This th1 minus 
TC1, understand? TH1 minus TC1. That is called as a theta1. Okay? These two you have to substitute here. Okay? So this is the what here that one is the, the outlet condition. Outlet condition TH2 minus TC2. That is called as a theta2 TH1. Inlet conditions of the hot and cold fluid. TH1 minus TC1. That is called as a theta1 here. Understand? So hence Q is equal to UA theta2 minus theta1 divided by ln of theta2 divided by theta1 here. Notion, the above equation may be written as Q is equal to U A theta m. What is called as theta m? Theta m is called as theta2 minus theta1 divided by ln of theta2 divided by theta1. You can change interchange, okay? Theta1 minus theta2 automatically here also the interchange will be occurs. Then theta m is called as logarithmic mean temperature difference that one is. Understand? So temperature difference theta 2 minus theta 1 is called as a temperature difference. What type of temperature difference? Logarithmic temperature difference. Why? Because their logarithmic quotients in the denominator part that one is. Understand? So this is called as the, a logarithmic mean temperature difference for the a parallel sheet, parallel flow heat exchanger that one is. Okay. So this is a very simple one, but you need to understand once you go through that one is, you can understand very well. Okay. Is there any doubt here in this, uh, any uh, flow here? No, sir. No doubt, sir. Yeah. That one is uh, here clearly. Uh, the, you, you return here that one is the from one step to each step clearly they return that one is and you can understand what is the meaning of the parallel flow heat exchanger. One thing is that one is you have to write the what is the parallel flow heat exchanger and you have to write that one is the uh, two diagram you have to write that one is before that one is assumptions you have to write, you have to write then you have to write mention each and every term. What is the CH? What is the capacity of the hot fluid? What is the capacity of the cold fluid? What is MH? MH is cut as a mass flow rate of the hot fluid. MC is cut as a mass flow rate of the cold fluid. That one is. And Q is cut as a what is the DQ? What is the DA? What is the Q? Okay. So you have to write mention, then you have to derive that one is. So this is for the eight mass questions that one is. Okay. Sometimes they, they may ask for the a 10 mass also process certain is okay depending of the mass we have to write okay so diagram is very very important okay diagram and derivation is very very important if they ask the assumption then only you have to write the assumption otherwise you no need to write the assumption here that one is okay okay so that one is uh, this derivation is used to what is called the design of the heat exchanger that one is okay so for that purposes they are using here that one if you solve one numericals you can come to know about that one is the how to the, how design that one is the what is called as a, a heat transfer rate to that one is the a parallel flow heat exchanger here that one is okay so we can stop now yes Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, so what is the time now? 10 45 is there. So, do you have any questions you can ask? No, sir, no questions, sir. No questions, sir. Shall I solve the one problem? Yes? Yes, sir. Yeah. Here, this one is the examples on the parallel flow. Okay. So, examples. The, okay, we can take this one is the flow rates of hot and cold water streams. Okay, flow rates of hot and cold water streams running through the parallel flow heat exchanger. That one is 0.2 kg per second and 0.5 kg per second respectively. 
What is the flow rate? Mass flow rate. Understand? Mass flow rate of the hot fluid is 0.2 to 2 kg per second and mass flow rate of the cold fluid is cut as a 0.5 kg per second respectively. The inlet temperature on the hot and cold sides are 75 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius respectively. Means inlet temperature. Here in the diagram, what I showed that means the inlet temperature of the hot fluid is 75 degrees Celsius and inlet temperature of the cold fluid is cut as a 20 degrees Celsius. That means, okay. The exit temperature of the water. Here the water, understand it. This one is cut as a water. Exit temperature of the water. What is cut as a hot water? Understand? So this is cut as an outlet condition. The exit temperature of the hot water is cut as a 45 degrees Celsius. Here that's mentioned the 45 degrees Celsius. If the individual heat transfer coefficient on the both side, hot fluid side and cold fluid side is 650 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Okay, H. Okay, that is called as a HL. So, individual heat transfer coefficient on the hot fluid side and cold fluid side that is called as a 650 watt per meter square degree Celsius. Calculate the area of the heat exchanger. Calculate the area of the heat exchanger. Okay. Here, that is, what is the inlet temperature of the hot fluid? 75 degrees Celsius. Inlet temperature of the cold fluid? Okay, 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius. And what is the outlet temperature of the so hot fluid? 45 degrees Celsius, you mentioned that one is. And this one is the mass flow rate of the hot fluid and mass flow rate of the cold fluid here. And draw the diagram and what is the theta one and what is the theta two here that one is. But, Outlet temperature of the cold fluid is not getting here. Okay, so you are not uh, so you don't know that one is the outlet temperature of the cold fluid. But here only we are getting outlet temperature of the in the statement they given outlet temperature of the hot fluid. How to calculate that one is the outlet temperature of the what is called as the uh, cold fluid that means you come to know about that means. Okay, here. The solution, uh, the mass flow rate of the hot fluid, mass flow rate of the cold fluid, and the inlet temperature of the hot fluid, outlet temperature of the hot fluid, so inlet temperature of the cold fluid, and uh, what is the HI and H0, okay? So heat transfer coefficient, inlet and outlet, they give on that one. The area of the heat exchanger, we need to calculate that one. Okay, how to calculate the heat exchanger? Okay, diagram, so we shown that one is in the diagram. In the previous slide, we showed that there is a diagrammatic representation here. That is, okay, heat transfer rate. So, because of that, one is the given the inlet temperature of the hot fluid, outlet temperature of the hot fluid, and specific heat of the fluid, hot water. Any time, anyhow, that one is water is 4. Point. That's a constant 4.187. So, that one is a kilojoules per second. That is a constant. That one is okay. So, that one is that's Q. Okay. Q, you can calculate what is the mass flow rate of the hot fluid. Hot fluid mass flow rate is that's it is 0.2. That is the CPH. CPH of a specific heat of the water is 4.187 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. That's already that's the constant that will be. Okay, you have to take then Q you can calculate 25.122 kilojoules per second. You will get that one. Understand? Then so what you need to calculate? So you need to calculate what is the exit temperature of the cold fluid here. Because for the logarithmic temperature difference, okay, you need exit temperature of the uh, inlet and exit temperature of the both the fluid, understand? So, but for that one, we need to calculate the, what is the exit temperature of the cold fluid. First, you need to calculate the Q here, then exit temperature of the how you calculate that means? So that is the you think you I think you know that one is heat lost by the hot water is equal to the heat gained by the cold water. That one is okay. Heat gained by the cold water. What is the heat lost by the hot water? You already calculated using the equation. Understand? That one is twenty five point one two two kilojoules per second. That means by using this equation. 
heat heat whatever the heat lost by the hot water that must be equal to the heat gained by the a cold water how to calculate the cold water mass flow rate of the cold water into specific heat of the water into tc2 minus tc1 why tc2 minus tc1 because of the outlet temperature of the cold water is higher than the outlet temperature of the cold water tc2 minus tc1 but tc1 inlet temperature of the what is called as the uh, cold fluid given that is 20 degrees celsius you taken that only the, the only we need to calculate the tc2 here so this tc2 is equal to 32 degrees celsius here by using this equation you can calculate tc2 is equal to 32 degrees celsius here that is okay so this is the how to calculate the what is the exit condition of the a cold fluid exit temperature of the cold fluid that one is okay you calculated the q and you calculate the exit temperature of the cold fluid next one we need to calculate what is the logarithmic temperature mean difference okay logarithmic mean temperature theta m what is the theta m theta m is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2 what is the theta 1 theta 1 is called as th1 minus tc1 inlet temperature condition and theta 2 is equal to th2 minus tc2 so outlet outlet temperature conditions of the both the fluids okay so so you have to mention all these things that are is here theta m okay mention all these things that are is you will calculate what is called as a theta m that is 29.12 degrees Celsius. That one is understand 29.12 degrees Celsius. You can get that one is okay. After substituting all the so temperature, inlet temperature conditions and uh, outlet temperatures conditions of the both the fluids, you will get the theta m value is equal to 29.12 degrees Celsius. Then what is the overall heat transfer coefficient? You need to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. Overall heat transfer coefficient using that is negligency of the thickness. Okay, if you take the uh, thickness of the uh, whatever that is the pipe thickness, you are negligible because they are not given any uh, thermal conductivity. Understand? They are not giving any thermal conductivity. So these equations you can get in the a uh, data and book also. This equations you can get in the data and book also. Understand? This equation, okay? This equations also you can get in the data handbook of the heat exchanger. Understand? Okay? Overall heat transfer coefficient can be calculated 1 upon U divided by equal to 1 upon HI plus 1 upon H0. So you can learn R2 divided by R1, you can take. But we are neglecting the thickness of the pipe. Understand? We are neglecting the thickness of the pipe because they are not given. Thermal conductivity is not given. So radiation, that one is called as the dimensions of the pipe, not given that one is. Understand? So that one is, in order to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient, we are using only that one is the, what is the heat transfer coefficient of the hot fluid, inner fluid, that is our heat transfer coefficient of the outer fluid that is called as a cold fluid that is water and hot water and cold water so once it's both are same okay so both are same that is because in the statement of the problem both the heat transfer coefficient of the hot fluid and cold fluid are same they given okay if they given the different you can take different okay one upon 650 plus one upon 650 that is equal to 1 upon 325. That one is that one is equal to U is equal to 325 back per meter square degree Celsius. So after this calculations, you will get the U is equal to 325 back per meter square. But you know that one is Q is equal to U A T theta M. Okay. You this one is called as a Q is equal to U. U is the overall heat transfer coefficient. A is called as a so heat exchanger area theta m theta m is called as a logarithmic mean temperature difference. You calculated theta m is equal to 29.12 degrees Celsius here. Then A is equal to 
So you take A here, you already Q calculated here. Understand? Q is calculated here, substitute the Q value, okay? And this theta M value and U value in this equation, then the area of the heat exchanger is equal to 2.66 meter square. 2.66 meter square, you can get here that only. Okay? This is the how to calculate the area of the heat exchanger. Okay? So what you understood from this uh, is if the area is equal to 2.66 meter square, then only the larger the bit temperature difference, you get 29.2. If the area is equal to 2.66 meter square, then only you will get that one is the, the outlet temperature of the so cold water is 32 degrees Celsius. What happens if the outlet temperature, we want that one is the outlet temperature of the cold water will be the a 40 degrees Celsius. Understand? If I want, the customer requirement is that one is the, of the outlet temperature of the cold water is a 40 degrees Celsius. Then what is the area we need to calculate? This is the design of the heat exchanger. So that purpose us, we are going for that one is the larger the mean temperature difference. Okay. So is there any questions guys here?